Hi, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me as I create this crystal serpent necklace featuring some four millimeter crystals, 11O and 80C beads. It's a very, very simple take on right angle weave then with a twist. As always, if you need any materials, go ahead and look below the video. In the description underneath there, we will put a link to all the supplies that are needed. Gather them up and let's get started. So to get started with our crystal serpent bracelet, we are going to make a long piece of right angle weave, switching sides back and forth between using bigger or smaller beads on the sides, the top and the bottom of the right angle weave. And what's going to happen then is as we get closer and come back through and string those beads together is it's going to shrink up and get shorter in length. We're gonna do a total of approximately 15 inches when it comes to this. I want you to do seven inches and then we're gonna switch up the pattern just a tiny little bit and then we're gonna do seven more inches before we go back and really seam it together and then connect our seed beads for the back. So to get started, I'm using some white dragon thread in size six, crystal bicones four millimeter, the uh, silver lab eight O's and then the 11 O's in that nice uh, matte metallic gunmetal. And I have a stop bead on here because we will be coming back down the project so I don't have to worry about it too much. And I'm going to go in right now and we are going to make a long strip like this that is seven inches for our right angle weave. So right angle weave, if you've never done it before, also check below the video in the description. I'll put some links to right angle weave. We are going to begin with a crystal, which is going to be the left side of our box. We're going to begin with an 80 seed bead. It's going to be the top of our box. Another crystal will be the right, and the charcoal bead will be at the bottom. We're gonna let that all go back, those, that whole five feet there, and stop at a stop bead that I've put on the project. From here, we're gonna do simple, repetitive right angle weave. Going back through the first three beads, which is gonna put us out the four millimeter bead, which is gonna be the right side of the box. Now I say box, but it's gonna look a little odd because we're not using all the same size bead for this. We're going to pull that nice and tight and make those bicones pretty much sit right on top of each other. You'll see a little bit extra thread. Don't worry about that at all. So our 8 currently is the top of the box. Our 11 is the bottom of the box. And then we have a crystal on the left and the right side of the box. Coming out the bottom of the right side of the box, we're going to add an 11 to be the next bottom bead, another four millimeter to be the right side of the bead, and another eight millimeter to be the top of that box. We're gonna sew into the opposite side of the four millimeter crystal that our thread is currently coming out of, which again was the right side of that little first right angle unit. And as we add three more beads to this, that bead all of a sudden becomes the left side of our right angle unit. So that's now the left side of this next right angle unit. We're gonna sew through the bottom bead, which is our 11-0. And we want to always come out with our thread and needle to get our next box started through that right bead. Not before it, but through it. So you want that thread exiting that bead. From here, we're going to add our top, which is our six or eight OC bead, our right side, which is our four millimeter, and our bottom, which is our charcoal. So into the opposite side of the bead that your thread is currently coming out of to finish that right angle weave unit. And again, it just takes a little bit of kind of pushing with that since we're doing different sizes. And already you're seeing a little bit of a curve. So through the top bead and right angle weave, it's going to be every other. So the last time it was the bottom bead that we were exiting. This time it's the top. And then once again, we're going to come down through and out that right hand side of the last right angle unit. We're going to do two more in the same pattern. So I have on my bottom 11, then my right four, and then my top eight. Go into the right hand bead there from the last unit to the opposite side of where your thread is coming out of. Pull that thread the whole way through. Give that bicone just a little tap so that way you get in there a little closer. And now once again, go through the bottom and out through the right hand side of that bead. I'm gonna do this one more time in that same pattern and then we're gonna switch. So right now again, the top is the silver. The right side is gonna be our crystal. Bottom bead is going to be our 11 now, and then we're going to steal that right side. We're going to share it, and now it's going to become the left side of this new unit. Once I pull that nice and tight, 
I'm going to sew through that top bead there because I always want to come out the right hand side of the bead and then down that right hand side and out. Now that's our first curve. It's going to be exaggerated a ton more as we go in and design. What we're going to do now though is consistently change every five beads. So we did five 11s on the bottom, uh, five eight on the top. Now we're going to switch. So the bottom is now going to have the silver, crystal on the right, top 11. So through the bead your thread is currently coming out of, and that is unit number one. So through the bottom or the top, depending on which side your thread is coming out of, exit through that right side of the box, that right side bead, which is always gonna be a crystal, and then start over again. So there's one, I've gotta do two, and we're gonna go in again and do four, and a fifth. So you're always gonna end up, when you're doing this first section here, with five 11s on the top, then the next five 11s on the bottom. Five eights on the top, five eights on the bottom. And we're gonna do this again for about seven and a half inches. The turn will happen naturally just the tiniest little bit, but it will be long and extended. So you can see five 11s here, five 11s to the bottom, five 11s to the top, five 11s to the bottom. So continue doing this for a good seven and a half inches. And then I'll show you how we're gonna change the pattern a little bit. And we're gonna stick with a bunch of the 11 O's in a row, 15 of them to one side before we continue for another seven inches. Once you get about seven and a half inches into the design, I want you to forget the whole, only do five and do 12 of those little 11 OC beads towards one side. That's gonna become the interior of the side. And as we add little seed beads between it, that's our keyhole before we go back in the opposite direction. So I've done 12 beads for the inside, 12 on the outside wrap, and now I'm getting ready to switch it back again to the opposite count. So now once again, I'm switching back to the smaller on the outside, bigger on the inside, and continuing with my right angle weave. So you are going to end up with about 15 inches of this. And keep in mind, it's going to shrink a fair amount. So we will add beads to the back of our necklace so that way the crystals stay focused just really right and in the center. So again, continue on with your piece where you have that long piece here that's about seven inches. Then take, and it's gonna be about an inch and a half to two inches, do that rotation where instead of doing five, we're doing 12, and then switch back to your groups of five. Once you have that full 15 to 16 inches done, what we are going to do is go back and create that snake version. Now you might look at this and say, perfect, it'll fit on my neck, it's good to go, but we are gonna need to add to the back because it's going to shrink up, remember. So how we are going to go about first is we are going to add between the 11s first. Coming out the last side of the design, where you're exiting, you're gonna go backwards. So we're gonna go through the 11-0 seed bead. We're gonna pick up another 11-0, and then we're going to sew through the next 11-0. This is going to continue the whole length of the project. So you're adding basically four new 11s between the five that are already there. Once you're done going through the 11s, you can see I have one more to go. We're gonna make sure to grab a tight pull on the thread, not where the needle is because that's going to fray your thread, but the thread coming out of the project, give a nice little yank and that's gonna pull it tight. Now what we're gonna to do to get to the other side is we are going to sneak through that bicone right after the 11. Once that is done, we proceed with this other side, going through the first 11, and then we add an 11 between each one of our 11s. It's gonna give the illusion that it's a peyote stitch as you're going in here and adding them in. And again, you just wanna make sure that you keep that tension on it. See how that turn is happening already? So we're gonna go through, we're gonna add all of the 11 OC beads the whole way along. And then when you get to that bottom section, where there's 12 in a row, it's really gonna start to round out. So go through the whole thing, adding in an extra seed bead between each one of the 11s. Cross through the bicones after you're done with that five set and do the five set on the other side. 
So once you're done doing your 11 OC beads, you'll see this kind of nice line of 11 O's going on where it really is turning and down there it really wants to turn and kind of spiral around and it'll be going kind of every which way. What we're going to do is accentuate that even more by adding in some additional crystals between the eight OC beads. So if you thought it was short, it's gonna shorten up just ever so slightly more and you'll get even more of that turn. Right now you kind of have a straight line look with those 11 O's, which is also cool. So you can stop there if you want to, but we're gonna do a combination here where we do the outer edge with crystals and then we are going to add our back. So coming out of the last piece here, I'm gonna go through that last crystal bicomb just as if I was getting ready to do my next set of 11s, give a nice tight pull on the thread. And it's kind of awkward to hold in your hands as it's going. You're going to, just like you did with the 11s, sew through your eight millimeter, and then sew in a new four millimeter bicone. This is going to accentuate that kind of serpent-y turn. Another four millimeter bicone goes on, and then you sew through the next eight. So just like we've been doing, it's so simple. Just like we've been doing with the 11s, we are now doing with our eights, which is gonna make that turn even bigger because the eights are forcing that separation between the beads. Once you're through the last one and you've added four on this first turn here, you're gonna go through that same bicone that you went through with the 11s, same one there, and then you're going to flip. So again, go through the first eight, pull that thread through the eight, and then start adding in your fours. So just like we did when we added the four 11 O's between the five 11s from the original, original, excuse me, right angle weave, now you're just going in and you're adding your four crystals between all the eights. When you're done with this side, you go through that shared four millimeter bead that sits right after the eight. It's the same one you went through for the 11s. Sew through it and then over. And that's when you get to start to see that really snaking pattern or that noodly pattern versus just that straight line of 11 O's. So go ahead through and keep adding in your crystals, top and bottom, just like I did here, going in and creating that snake design. When you get down to the center of the design and you have your grouping of 12 crystals on the outer edge, you can see how this is starting to get that keyhole look. As I go in and finish off that group of 12 and I have that opening, and if you want to, a little challenge, you can put a Rivoli inside of there. It would look really, really pretty. I'm going to share that first four millimeter bead from the left-hand side, the group of five previous to that little rounded section. So I want you to go in and go through your four millimeter, just like you would to connect to the next bicone. And when you come out that four millimeter, go ahead through the next 8 OC bead. Coming out the 8 OC bead, go to the section that sits directly across. Go through that single four millimeter crystal, pulling that nice and tight, and then go through your next 8 OC bead. When you pull that then, it basically closes up that keyhole link there, and then you're gonna proceed on with your next four millimeter and you go back to the pattern. So you're going through and you're sharing those four millimeter, that four millimeter crystal, and then right back in to them each independently on their own. After coming out the end of your design and going through the last crystal, what I want you to do is make the portion that's gonna go around the back of the neck. Now you can do this in whatever pattern you want. I'm keeping it very simple. I came out and added two 11 O seed beads, followed by one eight, followed by two and a half inches of 11 O's. From there, I did one more eight, and I did an, two more 11 O's. I'm up at the front here of my button. I'm using a button clasp because it'll hang nicely, and also it's easy to come back down the design. Need one more crystal here that I'm gonna add in the middle of my Crystal Lab button. I added an 11 on each side, and now I'm gonna come down the opposite side. When I come down the opposite side then, I'm gonna use this opportunity to reinforce, but also to connect to that crystal. So I'm, excuse me, adding two of my 11 O seed beads and then going back down that whole entire line of seed beads. Once my thread and needle come out the bottom here, I'm gonna come out that 8 O 
add two more seed beads and go into the opposite side of that crystal. From there, I'm gonna reinforce going back through this whole roll one entire time. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, making a loop rather than adding the button. So the whole way down here, make sure you're not missing any seed beads. If you want to, like I said, you could use crystals in the back, up to you. But once I come out here, I'm gonna to need to add a little bit of thread for my reinforcement. I'm gonna separate it out there, add two more seed beads, and then go back through that last crystal. And then see how that makes that come straight out from the design and makes a very intentional end that matches that crystal serpent. Go ahead then and reinforce going through one more time. And then we're gonna tie on to the starter thread here and do the same thing on the opposite side, only making a loop instead of the button. Here on the opposite end, I did the exact same thing, making a loop instead of the button. And I'm getting my thread right next to each other. I have the start of the thread ends there, and then my thread that I've continued with. And I'm literally just going to tie knots right over left, left over right. And then I'm gonna take my thread zap or my thread burner, and I'm going to burn down those thread edges to complete the necklace. The other thing that I'll do prior to doing so is just take my thread that I still have on the needle, and just go back a little bit in the design, a little bit further. And then I have a starter thread there that I will tie off to as well. So two times I went through, and this one's ready to burn, two times I went through that clasp section, doubling it up and creating that little V at the top and at the bottom, adding enough seed beads to go around the button. If you have a wire guard or a wire protector, same thing. You can go ahead and add that as well if you're doing just like a lobster clasp. You can also continue the design. So remember we did about 15 inches and then that shrunk up an additional four inches basically. So if you wanna continue the design, you can certainly continue that snake section and that serpent section and have it go the whole way back the back of the necklace especially if you know what you're doing it for, if you're doing it for an event where the hair will be up because it has kind of an elegant look to it. Burn down those thread edges, especially with this white or clearish uh, dragon thread, you're not gonna see any of those as well. So it's one of those that it's kind of funky to hold. So I'm gonna put it on and model it for you as well. So here is that crystal serpent design and the way that it looks on the neck. It is super, super elegant. You can see the um, you don't really even see the seed beads in the back, and I can't wait to see what people do with this front section. I left it open in the design because I foresee some people putting a Rivoli in there, which your 11 OC beads are ready to go in that peyote stitch style with up and down if you want to do that. Keep it open like I have it here or even hang a drop down from it. So lots of variation that can be done with this simple design, whether or not you're making it as a necklace like I did in that keyhole design or a bracelet. Thanks so much for joining me in this crystal serpent design. It's a lot of fun and I can't wait to see where you take this design and pattern. Make sure to show your examples in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Also, if you do any change ups, different sizes, rounds, if you change up the number, go further, hang something from the keyhole, make sure to comment below and help out other Potomac beaters that may be watching this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads and stay tuned for our next inspiration inspirational design.